Okay, so get ready, because today we're diving headfirst into a story that's really captured people's imaginations um, for a long time. Get to a good one. Yeah. The Westall incident happened back in 1966. Picture this. Sunny afternoon, normal school day in Australia, students are outside, and then boom, this silver disc just appears in the sky. Yeah, and what makes Westall, you know, such a head scratcher, at least compared to other UFO sightings, I mean, is how many people say they saw this thing. Right, not just like one person out hiking or something. Exactly. This was like a whole schoolyard, students, teachers, everyone looking up at the same time. Okay, so let's set the scene. April 6th, 1966, Westall High School in Melbourne, Australia. Seems like a regular day. And then some of the students who were outside noticed something really weird. What did they see? So picture this silver saucer-shaped thing just kind of hanging out up in the sky. Classic UFO description. Totally. But the thing is, it wasn't just a quick glance. This thing, it stayed there long enough for pretty much everyone to come and gawk. It's like you see something strange for a second, maybe you question it. But when everyone's seeing the same thing, got to be something there, right? Mm. So we've got all these people all saying it was a silver disc. What makes this one different more than just a weird thing in the sky? Well, this is where it gets really interesting. There's this former student, Joy Tai, and her story, even after all these years, is still crystal clear. She saw it hovering and then, get this, she said it actually landed in a field nearby and then just took off again crazy fast. Wow, hold on. This wasn't just a quick flyby. This thing was hanging out, yeah. landing and taking off. What was the vibe like? I mean, were people freaking out, excited? What? You know, I think it was a mix of everything. A lot of the witnesses, Joy included, talk about being, sure, curious, but also scared. I mean, wouldn't you be? This thing was moving in ways nothing they'd ever seen could. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah. So we've got this whole scene, tons of people watching this thing zip around the sky. What happened next? Did anyone try to get closer, call the authorities, anything? Well, that's where the Westall incident takes, I'd say, a really interesting turn the official response, or should I say the lack of one. Wait, are you saying they just ignored it with that many yeah, witnesses? That's basically. The explanations they gave at the time were, let's just say, a little weak. Like what? You know, the usual suspects, weather balloon, maybe they saw a plane wrong, even mass hysteria. Weather balloon, seriously, come on. I think people know what a weather balloon looks like, especially after seeing something like that in the sky. Right. You can see why everyone felt like they weren't being taken seriously. It's like their experience, what they saw with their own eyes, was dismissed. And honestly, that's probably why people are still talking about the Westall incident after all these years. You know, it just makes you wonder. You'd think if there was an easy answer, they'd just say it, right? Right. It's like they're adding fuel to the fire. But yeah. even without the official seal of approval, people haven't stopped digging. I mean, since that day in Westall, you've got all these researchers, some just really into it, some, you know, the pros, they're looking at everything, witness statements, photos, even tried using that ground radar stuff in that field where it supposedly landed. So what'd they find? Any big reveals? Okay, so no flying saucer blueprints or anything like that. But there are some photos, blurry, and even a little bit of film someone took with a Super 8 camera. It's not much to go on. Tech back then wasn't what it is now. But even so, you can tell something weird was in the sky. Okay, so we've got blurry pictures, grainy film, and a whole bunch of people who swear they saw it, but no hard proof. But people love a good theory, right? Right. So what are some of the thoughts out there? Well, got to start with the fan favorite, right? Aliens. I mean, it fits. Weird thing in the sky, this things planes shouldn't do. It's Practically UFO 101. Straight out to the movies. <laughs> Any ideas on what kind of ship it could have been, where those aliens were even going? Some folks, they try to connect the dots, look at other UFO sightings, see if the descriptions match up. Others, they go all in on the guessing game, you know, trying to figure out alien engines or why they were visiting Earth in the first place. But without, you know, actual proof of aliens, it's all just theories. Right. Aliens are fun to think about. But we did talk about how hush-hush the government was being. Make you think, maybe they know more than they let on. It's definitely a possibility, right? I mean, think about it. Cold War, everyone's trying to keep their secrets under wraps, new tech coming out all the time. It's not a stretch to think maybe what they saw wasn't aliens, but some kind of experimental aircraft. Maybe even a prototype they were testing out on the down low? Now, that is interesting. Were there any particular aircraft from back then that could be mistaken for, a, you know? People talk about this U.S. aircraft, the Flying Dorito, called the Tacit Blue, I think. A stealth plane, weird shape, built to fly under the radar, literally. They didn't show it off till the 90s, but who knows? Maybe they were testing it out way back then. So, 
You're saying there's a chance the U.S. was testing out their top secret planes over Australia. And if so, why so secretive about it? Governments and secrets, two sides of the same coin, right? Especially during the Cold War. Gotta stay ahead of the game, so yeah, maybe they weren't too keen on broadcasting their new toys. But gotta say, without some kind of proof connecting Westall to a specific plane, it's still just a theory. Even if it is a juicy one. It's like every time you think you're getting closer, bam, more questions <laughs> pop up. But I guess that's what makes this stuff so interesting, right? The mystery, the what-ifs, maybe never really knowing for sure. Totally. But beyond the what of it all, the Westall incident, it makes you think about why. Like, why do these stories grab us like they do? What do you mean? Well, think about it. Why do we love these stories about Westall, even after all these years? Is it just because we like the unknown, or is there something deeper going on? I think that's a really good question. It's more than just trying to figure out what was in the sky that day, right? It's about, I don't know, it's like this itch. We have to understand things we don't, things that seem bigger than us. Right. Like, it's built into us, this need to explore, to question everything, right. even if it means pushing the limits of what we think we know. We love a good mystery, for sure. But what makes Westall different, at least for me, is how many people saw this thing. It's not just one person with a blurry photo, you know. This was a whole group of people, many of whom probably knew each other, all saying they saw the same undeniably weird thing. And that's where it gets really interesting, I think, from like a social psychological angle, right? Like, mm -hmm. how do you go from individual experiences to a shared story everyone believes? How does something like this, something that no one can really explain, how does it change a community? That's a great point. Did it change things for those folks? Did seeing this thing change how they looked at the world? A lot of them say it stayed with them, like it shifted something, how they saw things, what they believed. Some were like, yep, that's it. Aliens are real. Others, maybe not so convinced, but they'd tell you something happened that day, something they couldn't explain. It makes you wonder, did it make them question everything else? Like, what else is possible now? For sure. And it's not just them, right? The West Allington is like Roswell. It becomes the story everyone knows, everyone talks about, debates, picks apart. Part of the big mysterious story of, well, everything. Exactly. It reminds us that there's still so much out there that we don't get. And you know what? Maybe that's okay. Because it keeps us looking, keeps us curious. Exactly. And hey, maybe someday we'll have the answers, but maybe it's the looking that matters, you know? Love that. Sometimes it's about the journey. That's what makes these deep dives so fun. And hey, listeners, what about you? What do you think about the Westall incident? Aliens? Secret planes? Something else entirely? Hit us up on our website. Let's get into it. And until next time, keep looking up.